The views and opinions of this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers. There is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options, which you should carefully consider prior to trading. Make sure to subscribe to the Market Talk YouTube channel. You can watch our latest interviews with top market analysts in the country, find bonus content, and much more. It's easy. Just go to youtube.com slash at Market Talk Egg and hit the subscribe button. Or you can search for Market Talk Egg on YouTube. End of the month, end of the quarter, USDA report day on Thursday. Quarterly grain stocks, prospective plantings numbers out from the federal government. Corn acres lower than expected. That was one of the headline notes we saw in the numbers. Let's talk about it and get some instant reaction to what we are seeing uh, with the numbers and the trade and more. Ted Seifred with Zaner Ag Hedge joins us here on the program. Ted, good to catch up with you, my friend. And uh, pretty wild day Thursday, of course, with all the uh, USDA data and the end of the month and the end of the quarter. Your instant reaction, let's start with the plantings. Corn, 90 million, a bit lower than expectations. Seemed to be pretty friendly to the corn bulls, Ted. Yeah, you know, it absolutely was, Jesse. Um, you know, I had been saying going into this report, we're going to need something to get excited about. Otherwise, uh, at the moment, in any ways, we don't have concerning weather for planting. And you had a corn chart that looked like it really wanted to roll over to the downside and at the very least go, go back and test those, those lows. But now maybe we have that spark and i say maybe uh because yeah corn acres came in about 1.7 million acres less than expectations as you have up on the screen right now bean, bean acres came in right on top of expectations so that means in the row crops there's 1.7 million acres that just kind of went poof right and then you look and say well where did that go when you look at cotton sorghum barley oats rice well, it didn't go there, right? The sorghum number came in almost 600 million, uh, or I'm sorry, 600,000 acres below expectations. The barley number came in about 500,000 um, below expectations. Oats were uh, 300 or 200,000 below expectations. Cotton was below expectations. The only one that was on the money was beans. And I guess you could say rice. So there's a lot of acreage that may be sort of unaccounted for here, Jesse. Um, I, I hesitate to think that those acres won't get planted. Now, I haven't had a chance yet to go back and, and reference the smaller crops versus USDA outlook numbers and the overall uh, acreage that they had for uh, the entirety of, of our planting for this year. But I have a feeling, again, there's you know a million and a half to two million acres that just, I'm not going to say unaccounted for, but just mm -hmm. that weren't included in expectations. And so there's a couple of ways we can look at that, right? we can say that markets have a job to do to try to encourage or pull that acreage back into production. Um, and, and at the very least, you know, what we saw right at 1101 is, is short covering from the funds on their corn position. Uh, very early estimates in my book are about 30 to 35,000 contracts that happened in about an hour. Right. So there's that. And will that continue? Will corn prices want to go higher to try to find that extra million and a half to two million acres you know i don't know i i think that'd be great because it would give us uh give producers great opportunities to get sold at some higher prices once again uh for those of us that put on uh crop insurance hedges in front of the report you get to kind of double dip on that and that's that's really not a terrible thing either but uh <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm encouraged. I, I'd like to see the market follow through. Now, the problem is, is that I think eventually we are going to see a higher corn acreage number or or some of the smaller crops. Either way, there's more acreage out there, I think, to be had. And I think that acreage will come out of the woodwork one way or another, as long as we have good weather for planting, which at the moment looks like we do. Um, so again, this might be a fairly short-lived thing as the market figures all of that out, but hopefully it lasts for more than just a day. Uh, hopefully yeah. there's some follow through in the next week. Uh, maybe even for a couple of weeks. And again, I'm hoping to see some of these higher numbers, a bigger a, a bigger bounce than what we've had so far uh, to really get some opportunities to make some more sales. The one number that stood out to me was spring wheat was a bit higher than the average estimate. And it just makes me wonder, did some corn acres maybe float to spring wheat? But I'm with you. It feels like there's some acreage here that's unaccounted for, Ted. That was really the only note that I saw is where maybe some of those corn acres went to, Ted. You know, and I've been talking to a lot of guys in the in the Dakotas or whatever. And coming into this report, they were saying the spring acreage wheat, uh, spring wheat acreage might not actually be there. So I, that was one of the bigger surprises for me on this report. 
Um, at the same time, I've been hearing the guys in the Dakotas talking about how sunflowers might be down very dramatically. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the original thought there was that, okay, that could very well be going to beans. Um, but apparently the, the spring, spring wheat acres were there, right? So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, that is a little bit of a wet uh, blanket on the, on the Minneapolis wheat contract, which is like the only thing that uh, was down with any significance. I, I guess soybeans, you know, too. But, but overall, Jesse, the, the all wheat number came in pretty darn close to expectations. You know, just a little bit higher, about 150, 160,000 uh, acres, right? And so that's not terribly bullish for wheat as a whole. Uh, it's also not terribly bearish. And I think you saw some short covering happening in wheat, sort of in sympathy with the corn there. Um, and by the way, the wheat chart of the bunch, I think, has the best maybe potential bottom setup for a, 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 a bigger correction, maybe. Uh, but we've, we've said that about wheat a few times before in the past and been proven wrong. So I'm not doing jumping jacks about it just yet. Um, but I did like the price action that we saw in wheat uh, really over the past week, but certainly there on report day as well. Ted, uh, grain stocks numbers real quick. I'll ask you about those. It felt like most of this pretty much was as expected. I know corn was lower than the average estimate. Beans was a little bit higher. I mean, your thoughts as you look at all the acreage and, and you look at grain stocks and plug things into balance sheets here. Any Anything else of note for you, Ted? Yeah, Jesse, great question. Uh, yeah, um, I'm glad we talked about quarterly grain, grain stocks. I think so many people are so, so very quick to dismiss it. And, and that corn number coming in below expectations, I've been kind of wondering about that as we were leading up to this report, mainly because, uh, you know, you, you go back and look at the cattle on feed reports that we've been seeing, and, and it seems like we've, we've had a bit more animals out there than what have been expected meaning you know that feed and residual category which is the one we really can't get a handle on coming into a quarterly grain stocks number you felt like that might be a little bit stronger and that the quarterly grain stocks number for corn might come in a little bit lower than expectations and here we are <coughs> excuse me but <clears throat> about 80 million bushels and it's not enough to really change the outlook uh for corn uh, for the old crop situation it's not enough to say that we're going to get below a two billion bushel carryover jesse but what it is, 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 a, is a slightly positive number combined with a positive acreage number. And those things together gave us some strength in core. Now, then you look at soybeans and that number coming in above expectations. Well, the thing about soybeans is that we don't have that feed and residual category. I mean, there is a residual category, but it's not this big uh, portion of the balance sheet like it is in corn. We really know or have a very good feel of where the soybean quarterly grain stocks number should come out because, well, exports and crush are pretty well known, right? So mm -hmm. for that number to come in above expectations, albeit not by a whole lot, that's a little bit disconcerting. Uh, it, it really kind of suggests that if anything, the soybean carryover number might be growing into the end of the market year rather than coming back down again. There are things that can change that, Jesse, but this quarterly grain stocks report is not reflective of, of that, uh, uh, suggesting that. Um, so really, I, all in all, this was a pretty bearish report for beans, even though numbers came out pretty close to expectations. The expectations were bearish, and they reflect a bearish situa situation for soybeans going into the end of the marketing year, unless there's something big that happens. And whatever big that happens for soybeans would have to be reflected in some pretty massive export sales. We know Crush is good. But sales can be better, uh, and that would be the only way to really improve the balance sheet for soybeans. And again, not reflected in the quarterly grain stocks number and also not reflected in the uh, weekly export sales that kind of get lost in the mix there. But we saw those on Thursday, and they were not good for beans either. Ted, great stuff, great thoughts. Anything final, any final thought you'd want folks to kind of take home after a, a wild end to the month, quarter, and all the USDA data, Ted? You know, I'm just going to go back to what we originally started talking about. You know, where's the acreage? Uh, it, it seems to me that there's some acreage out there that wasn't accounted for. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we have a, a free and clear or, or a un unobstructed planting season, if we find some more acres by the time we get into, uh, by the time we get to the, the final planted acreage numbers. They're never final. But, you know, the, the next acreage report that we see. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think corn... Given all the, 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 the ample time for field work that we've had in the fall and had in the spring, 
given the current outlook for the planting season, man, I, I, I really think that the corn acres are going to grow. And if that's the case, then a lot of the bullishness that we got from this report might fade away pretty quickly. I really think we should be looking at this as an opportunity, Jesse. So, so don't take that lightly. Uh, this isn't a fundamental change in my book. Yeah, okay. If I plug in a 181, which again is a, it's has a lofty yield number, but after last year, you have to believe that's attainable given a little bit more normal growing season this year. A 181 on that planted acreage number and the the corresponding harvested acreage number. It does cut out uh, close to 500 million bushels of production from last year because of the lower acreage. Um, but because of the bigger beginning stocks, it puts us in a very similar situation of another 200 billion bushel carryover. So keep that in mind, even with the lower acreage number, it doesn't, doesn't claw us out of a, what I'm going to say, bare territory uh, ending stocks number. So, so do, that's the takeaway. Embrace the, the strength, look for selling opportunities. That's the takeaway. Ted, great stuff. I know folks want to reach out to you, questions, talk with you, work with you, zaner.com, or they can give you a phone call. Sure. I'm it, sure. Can't they, Ted? Directly. 312-277-0113. I'm also on the Twitters or the X or the whatever we're calling it now, but I'm at the Ted spread. Uh, yeah. I like to have fun. Well, Ted, always appreciate it. Thanks for joining us on a busy report day, and we will talk to you again soon. Thanks, Jesse. Thanks for having me, man. Take care, buddy.